Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take a few minutes and talk to you a little bit about geology and geologic processes. Uh, you're going to see that that has a big effect on the environment. It's going to help us understand um, the way the earth structure came to be the way it is, and that's going to help us understand climate, that's going to help us understand weather, that's going to help us understand the biology and the living things in different areas. So first, I want to stop, start by talking about different ways to divide the Earth. So here we have a picture, it's supposed to represent a cross section of the Earth. So if you imagine the Earth all the way around, this is cutting to the center, and we very often divide the Earth into layers, we classify it, okay? Commonly that's done two different ways. One way to divide the Earth is in what we call compositional layers. Another way to say that is based on the Earth's chemistry, what it's made out of, okay? When we divide the Earth into layers based on composition, we divide it into three parts, okay? The upper layer is the crust. Below the crust is the mantle. And the inner layer is the core. Now, I said that these divisions are based on their chemistry, on their composition, okay? The core of the earth, we believe, is made primarily out of iron and nickel. That's what gives the earth its magnetic properties. So this core is made primarily of iron and nickel, and that's why we give it its own layer. Okay, above that is the mantle, okay? The mantle is made of the denser elements in the earth's outer layer, therefore they are below the crust. The crust tends to be made up of the lighter elements, okay? Mostly uh, what we think of as rocks, but also you have water and different things along the way. So crust mantle, core. There is a second way that we sometimes <clears throat> divide the earth, Earth's layers, and that's not based on its composition, but based on its physical properties. Usually when we divide the Earth's layer based on its physical properties, we divide it into five different layers. So let's start and go from the inside out this time. So here we have the core made of iron and nickel. We divide that into two different layers when we do it on its physical properties. The inner layer, we believe, is a solid, solid iron and nickel. The outer core is liquid iron and nickel. Now, we believe that based on the way uh, earthquake waves, seismic waves travel through the Earth. Okay? Seismic waves, earthquake waves can't be detected on the opposite side of the Earth because this liquid layer will not transmit them. It blocks them. Okay? So we have an inner core, solid, an outer core, liquid. Above that, we have what? we call the mesosphere, okay? The mesosphere, kind of a middle layer, we're not going to focus much on that. Above that is what's called the asthenosphere, okay? The mesosphere is solid, the asthenosphere is a little bit plastic. Now when I say plastic, most of you have an image in mind of things made out of plastic. What we mean by this though is it's kind of like a liquidy solid, kind of think like molten glass. Or if you see uh, you can think of this as a magma layer. So if you think of visualizing lava when it's coming out of the ground, how it's still kind of solid, but it can ooze, okay? Not exactly like that, but that gives you an idea of the asthenosphere. So the asthenosphere is solid enough to transmit those earthquake waves, but it's plastic enough that it can slide around, okay? On top of that asthenosphere, the upper layer of the crust we call the lithosphere. Litho is a prefix that means rocks, rocky layer, like a lithograph or a monolith, a lithograph being riding on stone, a monolith being a big stone outcropping, uh, paleolithic meaning the old stone age, litho means rock or stone, okay? So the lithosphere is the outer layer. So five different ways to divide, five different layers we divide in based on physical properties, three layers based on chemical properties. Now, why is that important, okay? What I want to look at next is the idea of plate tectonics, tectonic theory. So in plate tectonics, the idea is that there are the, these layers of crust, layers of the lithosphere that are solid, and they are floating on the asthenosphere, which is a little bit plastic. So because it's got that plastic -y magma, those little layers can slide around on the top, and they move. Now, there are big sections of the crust that stay as a group. We call those plates. There are certain major plates and minor plates, and that leads us to the theory of plate tectonics. These big plates can slide around on top of the asthenosphere. Now, what happens as they're sliding around is sometimes they bump into each other, okay? So there are different ways that this can happen, okay? 
One way is the plates are moving together and they collide. Now when plates collide when they move together, one of two things can happen. Either one plate is going to be forced beneath the other, slide beneath the other, or both plates are going to collide and they are going to buckle up. Okay. So if you look at this first picture, here two plates are colliding. One plate is being pulled underneath the other. Okay. We call this process subduction. Sub meaning below, duct meaning moving. It's moving below the other layer. Now when this happens, this gives some very distinct features to the geology when we think this happens. So what happens here, we have an oceanic plate colliding with a continental plate. Okay, so think here of the west coast of the United States or of South America. Okay, so here the Pacific plate may be colliding into the North American plate and this is being pulled underneath. As this oceanic crust is pulled underneath, I want you to see what happens right here. Can you see that there's a little dip? Okay, when that's the case, you get very deep water right off the coast. Okay. Uh, the Marianas Trench off the Pacific Coast, deepest place in the ocean. So you're going to get that deep trench that's formed where that crust comes down. Now, as this comes under, it's forced down into that warmer layer. And as some of this plate is forced down, it melts. And when it melts, it changes into magma, and you get these magma chambers. And there's little cracks along the way in the rocks, and some of this magma sometimes makes it up toward the surface where it forms a volcano. All along the west coast of the United States, the west coast of South America, there's a large mountain range, different mountain ranges depending on where you are, and many of those are volcanic. So when you have subduction going on, if there is a, an ocean plate colliding with a continental plate, you're going to get a trench, you're going to get mountains, and you're going to get volcanoes. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, you don't have to have an ocean plate colliding with a continental plate. Okay? You could also have an ocean plate colliding with another ocean plate. Again, subduction can occur and one plate is pulled underneath the other. As that happens, again, it melts. As it melts, it forms a magma chamber and it works its way toward the top. So, again, this will make volcanoes. Sometimes the volcanoes say submerged. Sometimes they get tall enough that they come up above the ocean surface. And you make volcanic islands. Think Hawaii. Okay? So you have a, a volcanic island that's being formed by subduction. Okay? So that's the first way the plates can move. They can collide. One is pulled underneath the other. Subduction. So let's look at a second way that they can collide. If you have continental plates colliding, they're both relatively light, they're both on the surface, and when they collide they tend to push up. Okay? Best example I can give you of this is where the Indian subcontinent, India, is colliding into the, the Asian continent. And as they're pushing together, we think they're pushing together. They formed a huge mountain range, the Himalaya. So this is called mountain building. When they collide, it buckles and pushes up, and it makes a mountain. Now, there's a little description here. We have the plate boundary colliding in, continental crust, continental crust, and basically it gets forced up. You get a crustal thickening. Um, the densest lower crust attaches and goes underneath. I don't really want you to worry about the details. I just want you to know that it's being pushed toward the surface. So again, a good example is the Himalaya. So this is called the Indian subcontinent. It is a plate. It is colliding with the Asian mainland. So as they're moving together, it's forced up this huge mountain range. In geologic term, we think of these as relatively young mountains. Okay? Now, plates don't have to move together. They can move different ways. A second way that plates can move is side by side. Okay? So if the plates are moving side by side, we call that a fault. A uh, most famous fault for us is the San Andreas Fault. Here you can see a picture of the San Andreas Fault in the desert, and you can even see right where the plates move. Now, San Andreas Fault is famous for causing earthquakes on the west coast. As they're sliding past each other, they, the rocks are holding together, but after the pressure builds up enough, they slip, and as they slip, can cause big earthquakes. So geologic processes are going, going to drive um, earthquakes and volcanoes and other things that have a major effect on the environment or can have a major effect on the environment. Now, 
Faults aren't always even. They're not always side by side. Lots of time we get what's called a hanging fault, where one of the plates is higher than the other. So here you can see it's starting to be pulled under, but it's not being forced down into the middle. They're, still, they're sliding side by side, so we have one part over the other. So if you look here, I wanted to show you an actual geological feature where you can see that. It's very easy to see this. The hanging fault is sometimes harder to pick up, but you can see where the plates meet and one layer is hanging over the other. They're not colliding though, they're slowly, the pressure is going and they slide side by side. So two things we've looked at so far, the plates can collide, one can be pulled under, that's subduction. The plates can collide, they're pushed up, that's mountain building. The plates can slide side by side, that's a fall. Now, if plates can move together and move side by side, how else can they move? They can move apart. That can happen in a couple of different places. Let's first look at two oceanic plates that are moving apart. If they are moving apart, what's left below in the asthenosphere or the lower crust is, a, is magma. So the magma starts to leak up through there. Okay? So as it moves apart, you get these volcanic uh, areas where the plates are moving apart. The most famous of these is what we call the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So we believe that the Atlantic is spreading apart. In the middle of the Atlantic, there's this ridge of mountains. They're volcanic mountains, and they're formed as the magma comes up from below. Now, most of the time, these mountains are below the surface. Occasionally, they can get tall enough to come above the surface. Iceland is part of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Iceland, the land of fire and ice, famous for its volcanoes. It's formed from this seafloor spreading. Okay? If you have continental plates moving apart, you get a similar effect. Instead of calling it seafloor spreading, then we give it a different name. It's called a rift. Okay? <clears throat> These are pictures from the East African rift, very famous rift. And again, it forms mountainous volcanoes along the way. Okay? You may recognize Mount Kilimanjaro. So here's a picture of Africa down on the Serengeti. It looks relatively warm. You got giraffes and things. As you look up, you can see the snows on Kilimanjaro. It's a volcano. Okay? As those plates are moving apart, the magma comes up, the mountain builds. Okay? Here's another view of Kilimanjaro looking this way, and here's a, a mountain further in the distance, I believe in Kenya. So this is uh, Mwenzi Mount. Kenya is actually also part of this mountain range, so there's a number of mountains in a row along the rift zone. Now, that last little bit's not for you, it's for something that I did long ago. But I want you to see the basic ways that these plates can move. Collide, subduction. Collide, mountain building. Slide past each other, a fault. Move apart, seafloor spreading, or a rift.